Hi, my name is Granny, and this is Granny and Grumpy's Greenhouse. Today I'm going to make something that I've never made before, and we hope it turns out well. The last breads I made turned out really, really good. They're not really bread, but they're keto-type breads. Today's is a keto-type bread as well. I'm experimenting because I can't have wheat any longer because of the rheumatoid arthritis. It just hurts me too bad, and I'm tired of the pain. So um, this is a recipe that I saw on YouTube done by uh, Mrs. Karen Berg. She is Dr. Eric Berg's wife. And um, she did this, and, and I thought I would try it. Let's see what happens. So it's called round bowl bread. And so we're going to start off with, first of all, uh, we've put a two, two teaspoons of... Um, maple syrup in this small bowl and then we're going to throw into it one and a fourth cups of water that is at 105 to 110 degrees now she claims that this ha this is very very intense you've got to have it exactly at that or it doesn't work and so we're going to see <laughs> then you throw in that was te two teaspoons of maple syrup and I'll also put it in at the descriptions, uh, I'll put the recipe as well. So we're going to put in next two teaspoons of instant dry yeast. Just barely mix it around a little bit. You don't want to kill the yeast. You don't want to do anything to stop this from doing what it's supposed to do. Now what it actually will do is even though it is keto, it's got maple syrup in it. And the maple syrup, what it does is it eats up, uh, the yeast eats up the maple syrup. That's why it's so important for it to be at a certain degree. So far, it's not doing exactly like the way hers did, even though it's starting to do it. It starts to make a lot of little gas stuff inside there. So we'll just see. It has to sit for 10 minutes. So we'll put this in here and we'll move our yeast over a little bit. You want to get a cookie sheet and we want this at 425 degrees. So let's set the oven. Okay. Set the oven now. All right, so we're going to stick together in this bowl our dry ingredients. And uh, the first thing is one cup of almond flour. Now, mine is uh, extra fine because I want it to taste more like bread. The coarser it is, the, it doesn't taste as much like bread when it's coarse. <laughs> so, one teaspoon of salt. Dump that in. I use pink salt because it has 74 different minerals, including, including trace minerals in it. And your body needs this really badly, so. Okay. Got that. Now, uh, the next thing is one cup of arrowroot flour, or powder, whichever one you call, want to call it. I'll put that in. I had to order most of this stuff because when I made a run to Whole Foods, uh, and I have to go quite a ways uh, over an hour to get there. They didn't have any. They were out. So I ordered it online from Amazon. Came in in a couple days. Then we want a third of a cup of coconut flour. So we've got that. Let's dump that in. And then we want two tablespoons of psyllium seed, which I have in here. And one and a half tablespoons of ground chia, which I also have in there. Now, my chia did not grind up as best as it could have, but we're going to do the best we can with what we have because um, I couldn't use my coffee grinder because I had used something else in it that I can't go back and change. So, and I didn't want to put that in with it because it wasn't human stuff. So, anyway, mix this all good. Just make sure it's really good and mixed. It's very important about that part, so... Okay, by the way, I love to use bamboo spoons, especially this one. 
course, this is also a fanny wrecker. <laughs> so, uh, whenever um, grandkids don't always uh, be good, you know, they get a little swat with that on the, the pump side of their butt. So anyway, okay. So the next thing we're going to do is after we mix the ingredients in 10 minutes, then we will make the bread up and then we will put it on a, the biggest cookie sheet you got because we're going to make two of these little bowls. Now, it's not a bowl, it's a bull. So it's just a round, it just means a round cake. So we're gonna put two of these on there and I also use unbleached parchment paper. I don't like to use bleach because it's got bleach in it. So, you know, it's been stuff done to it that you really don't want to have your food on. So anyway, we'll come back in about 10 minutes or less and we'll see what's happened to our mixture. See you then. Okay, so we've washed our hands already. And it's been 10 minutes, so our mixture has made up. And I am happy to say that it fluffed up just like it was supposed to. This mixture has gotten really frothy looking. So it's done exactly what it was supposed to do. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's real frothy on, this, on the top. And um, it did what it was supposed to. So we will pour it in. And I uh, did want to say... Now we are going to use an egg wash on this later after it has uh, baked or before it's baked but um, we will make a, an egg wash to go on this right before we bake it so anyway we're going to mix this together and knead for one minute okay I'm going to go ahead and get it all mixed together. Now, to be prideful is not a good thing. But I do have take a lot of pride in making um, the whole wheat bread that I make. But it causes me to hurt really bad. <laughs> um, I make it with our organic uh, whole wheat. And... Um, so I would be very tickled to death to have something that would equate that because it tastes so good. It's the best whole wheat bread, loaf bread you'll ever, ever, ever eat. So it would be nice if I could have something that was similar to that that I could make that I could actually eat because I'll tell you what, that's the hardest thing about having rheumatoid arthritis is not being able to eat all the foods you love because you can't have so many things. So bread's one of them and I would just be tickled pink. Okay, so we've got this all mixed together. So I'm going to go ahead and just knead this around for one minute. Seems a little bit on the wet side to me. And I put what I was supposed to in here, so. And you have to remember, when you're making stuff that has uh, coconut flour and almond flour in it, you have to remember it's going to be a lot different. Also, this has arrowroot. And so, anyway. It's not exactly the same as bread, but, you know. I got to learn to make something that will satisfy my taste for bread because I'm telling you, it's hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Here we've planted this whole big greenhouse, Grumpy and I have, and uh, I can't eat most of the things that are the summer crops because most of them are things I can't have. Now I can have strawberries galore. <laughs> Thank goodness the Lord grew lots of strawberries out there. But, uh, but... I can't have all the rest of the things that are out there. They just hurt me so bad. So, can't wait for fall because all the crops that are in fall I can have. <laughs> so, that will be wonderful, wonderful, and wonderful. Okay, so I think we've done this for an hour. And, uh, I'll make this more and around. Thing. and then we will dump it on there now it says put a damp towel over bread and store somewhere 
warm for one hour. Now, when they say warm, they're not meaning like, like an oven or something like that. They just mean something that's mediocrely warm. So the top of my stove should be fine because it is heating up on the inside. Let me wash my hands real quick of this dough. Now this dough comes off your hands a whole lot easier than most doughs. And we'll take this one. Go make it a little bit damp, not bad damp, but just a little bit. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to put this around this <laughs> over the bread down inside the bowl. And then we'll stick it over here on top of our oven. There. And we'll wait one hour. And then when our hour is uh, over, then I'll have the egg wash out here already. And we can put that on it, crisscross it, and bake it. So we're going to bake it for 35 to 40 minutes at 425 degrees. Then we're going to let it cool completely. Now, when, before I go take a break for an hour I just wanted to tell you that when you make breads biscuits cookies you really need some of these they are cooling racks and uh, it took me 44 years to finally break down and buy them because I would use everything in the house under the sun but I really like them since I purchased them <laughs> they really really work well so anyway see you in just a little bit so it's been an hour and I'm going to make some egg wash to put on the bread. But let's get the bread out of the oven first. Or off the top of the stove, I mean. Let's see what it looks like. Well, it's risen really well. So let's put the bread on the uh, pastry sheet. Uh, on the parchment paper. Now we'll put the bowl in the sink, make it a little more tidier. So um, let's make our egg wash. So in this container I have one teaspoon of water. So we'll take and put our cracker egg and put it in this bowl. I get my eggs from my sister-in-law so these are organic as well as uh, uh, free Roman chickens. So let's mix up this egg really well. We're going to uh, just keep stirring it and, and whipping it up and get it really, really mixed together. Now we'll take my pastry brush, pull the bread to the edge of the table, and we're going to take my pastry brush, and we're just going to paint the whole entire top of the loaf with the egg wash. And we can do it uh, twice if we like. We can just keep covering it so that the whole entire round bowl is done. The egg wash helps it to turn golden brown whenever it's baking in the oven. So instead of it looking a whitish color, it'll look real pretty and brown. I was going to make this into two, two rounds. This is why I used my bigger uh, pastry sheet. But um, after looking at it, I decided at the last moment that I would just leave it in one big lump sum. I forgot something. Um, we can take a knife. Let me get one. We can take a knife and we can cut crisscrosses in the top. And it makes it have a nice indenture look. But I don't really want that on mine, so I'm not going to do that this time. So 
So now, let's put it in the oven. Get the open, oven door open. And let's put it in the oven. Now, originally we set the oven for 425 degrees. And so it's plenty hot. And we're going to uh, bake it, it says, for about 40 minutes. Let me get my little timer. Now, unfortunately, you're going to have to uh, endure me going through 40 minutes of doing this. Now, because I forgot to, to uh, turn my mic on originally, uh, you won't actually have to hear that irritating sound, but I have to count actually 40 minutes out in order to be able to set this alarm. So, we'll be back in 40 minutes and then we will give it the acid test of letting Grumpy taste this bread. See how he likes it. He hasn't been too keen on any of the breads that you can buy that are fake in the grocery store. So uh, anyway, let's see how it turns out. So it's time to take our bread out of the oven and we'll put it here on this bread rack. So this is what it looks like. Um, you know, it was really very light in color, but now it's got a golden brown color to it. So we'll just take it off and put it on there. So remember, um, that you want to put your egg wash on it before you put it in the oven. And then when you take it out, you've got to put it on these, um, you know, bread racks. And um, we'll see what it tastes like in just a little while. I'll come back and after it's cooled down completely and slice it, let you see what it looks like on the inside. And then we'll give it the taste test of the century to see if Bob likes it. So anyway, thanks. See you in a little while. Well, the bread is cooled down, and this is what it looks like. It's cooled down enough for us to be able to sample it, so I'm going to let my husband sample this. He is the ultimate test, so come on in here, Grumpy. It looks good. It smells got delicious. Some, got some real weight to it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you used to make that heavy bread, and it, it was not... The ideal, no. but, but this, this bread, different. but this bread is not a uh, normal bread, and it's we're gonna just see. We may not like this bread, so. Oh no, I busted my knife. I got a story to tell you in just a minute about that. On the hard bread. Let's see. Well, it didn't rise very well. Yeah, it it doesn't look quite the way I thought or hoped for it to look. Maybe this kind of bread has to be um, thinner. <laughs> Smells okay. It's, Doesn't have much flavor. It's okay. I mean, I've never really been a fan of fake bread anyways. I don't think they can see you, Grumpy, but anyway. Well, it's all right. They can hear me. But <clears throat> um, our daughter makes a lot of fake breads. Or you did know, at one time. With different kinds of coconut flowers and things like that. I've never really found one that satisfies your desire for bread. Now, this is close. This is not bad. If it would rise a little more, it would be better. Yeah, it's not too bad. No. It, it tastes pretty good. It just needs, to, it's it's too dense. It needs a little bit more fluff. Yeah. But I think that we could actually make small sandwiches out of it and right, be happy to eat it. You want to try it? Anyhow, the dog what I was going to tell you, well, now she's going to have the splitters, but anyway. Um, but what I was going to tell you was a story about um, broken knives with bread. Bob and I have this year on June 19th, we were married 44 years. And uh, so in um, the first year of our married life, I decided that I wanted to learn how to make bread because the man who um, 
Bob worked for, he made bread a lot, and it was really good. So I said, I'm, I'm going to learn how to make really great tasting and wonderful looking and everything whole wheat bread. So I go into the kitchen and I put all the ingredients together and everything. And for wedding present, we had gotten tons and tons and tons of presents. One of the things that we got was a vanadium molybdenum set of knives. Now, supposedly, I don't really know because I'm not that scientific minded on that kind of thing. But uh, vanadium molybdenum knives are supposed to be some of the strongest knives you can purchase. And so they were chef knives. And um, so I made the bread. I was real proud of myself because I got this bread made. It was in the oven. Everything looked good. Brought it out. Let it cool down. Took the knife. Went to cut it. Well, I used it like a saw and I still couldn't get it to cut. So it ended up that <laughs> we worked and pounded so hard on the poor knife to try to get it to go through the bread that it actually broke the blade on the knife because it just could not hold up. So Bob looked at me and said, well, if you keep making these, we can build that house we want. <laughs> so anyway, I was manufacturing bricks. <laughs> so, anyhow, y'all have a blessed evening. Thank you for coming into Granny's uh, kitchen and seeing her make some bread. Now, I have to say, it's not the best tasting uh, bread I've ever eaten, but it beats everything that we've tasted from the store so far. So I'm going to work on this a little bit and see if we can get it to rise a little bit more and not be quite so dense. Anyway, have a blessed evening. Thank you so much for being with me this evening, and you have a wonderful night's rest. See you later. Bye.